Chapter 181, 1990 Mary had her first child that year, a little girl called Rachel, after her mother, Rachel Marlene. Not gonna lie, she told Remus over the phone. I'm praying she's a squib. Can't be doing with all that nonsense. She invited him to the christening, and he went out of obligation. It had been decades since he'd set foot into a church, and this was a huge Catholic one in Croydon. Grant didn't come. He said he was too scared he'd burst into flames when he crossed the threshold. <sighs> That's ridiculous, Remus sighed, tired and humourless. Mary is literally a witch. Is she safe in a church? <sighs> My granddad was a Bible basher, Grant shuddered. They can all do one as far as I'm concerned. Grant was rarely so stubborn, so Remus went alone and tried not to think about funerals. After the ceremony, there was a bit of a party in the hall next door, and Mary showed off the baby. She was gorgeous, chubby with huge brown eyes and huge brown curls, and a gummy smile sure to be as dazzling as her mother's one day. Remus waved at the giggling cherub nervously, and patted her soft baby hand. I'm completely obsessed with her, Mary gushed, holding her up. Want to hold her? Mary grinned then laughed that girlish cackle which took him years back. I'm teasing. <laughs> Remus, darling. Here, I'll give her to Darren's mum for a bit. Let's you and me have a catch-up. They sat on red plastic chairs in a quiet corner of the church hall, clutching paper cups of watered-down orange squash. It was a small space, filled with the noise of family celebration and children playing. Mary's family was huge, and as brash and lovable as she was, Remus felt out of place but what else was new? You're not getting married, then? Remus asked. You and Darren. <laughs> Shh! Mum will hear you. Mary giggled. She's furious, of course. She's pretending we had a small ceremony in Jamaica before Rachel was conceived. <laughs> I don't fancy it. And we've barely got the time, what with the garage and the new house. Remus nodded along, smiling. It felt so good to be sitting next to Mary again, to have her chattering away, full of energy and joy. How about you? Still up in Soho? Mary asked, giving him an appraising look. He'd come dressed in a suit he'd bought the day before at a charity shop. It was okay, a bit seventies, and too big on him. But that was the style these days anyway. Yeah, he nodded. Don't think I'll ever move, to be honest. The flat's paid for. Got a boyfriend? Mm-hmm. Sort of. I know you have. Why are you being so mysterious? Is he a muggle? Yeah. Oh, I wish you'd come and see me more often, Remus. I worry about you. He smiled at her. You're such a mum. That made her laugh. <laughs> Guilty. She was still beautiful and looked the same at thirty as she had at eighteen in his mind. She wore a loud, hot pink dress suit with razor-sharp power shoulders and a gleaming gold fascinator perched atop her head. She'd cut her hair short, making her face look more angular. Mum keeps calling me Grace Jones. Mary touched her neck, self-consciously. I like it, though. Can't waste time fussing in front of the mirror when I've got the little monkey keeping me on my toes. Are you working somewhere? Oh, here and there. Rima shrugged, non-committantly. You know what it's like. You know, Dumbledore gave Snape a job. Mary leaned in and whispered. Remus didn't know why. He was the only other person there who knew who Dumbledore or Snape were. He's a teacher at Hogwarts now. Can you believe that? Rima shrugged. Mary continued, furious. This had obviously been on her mind for some time. When I think of all the suffering that Snivellus caused, when I think about all the friends I've lost... Lily and James, Peter and Marlene. Snape wasn't responsible for their deaths. How are we to know? So what? He turns spy for two bloody weeks at the end, and that guarantees him a cushy job for the rest of his life, does it? What was he doing while we were hiding in cellars like rats? Where was he when we were disappearing by day? Mary. I just can't believe Dumbledore. Has he offered you any help? He hasn't me. Not worth his time, I suppose. They all stuck together in the end, the old families. I don't want anything from him, Remus said. 
Being in Dumbledore's debt is too dangerous. Anyway, Snape has to live with what he did, just like we all do. She lowered her eyes then, and Remus knew that they were both thinking about Sirius. I'll tell you what, Remus, my love, she said finally. I don't care if she's magic or not. My baby girl won't be cannon fodder for that old bastard. Next time that lot want a war, you and me are going to be smart enough to keep well out of it, yeah? Too right, Remus replied. They could agree on that, at least. He'd joined the werewolves again before he ever rejoined the Order. You know, having Rachel makes me think about Harry, Mary said wistfully. Now I've got a child of my own, just don't know how Lily and James did it. Remember? We were all just kids, playing mummies and daddies, weren't we? I suppose, yeah. He'll be starting Hogwarts next year, Harry. What? No, that's not right. He must only be... Remus struggled to do the maths in his head. Ah, shit, he said. I didn't even think. Poor little love, going to school with no parents to see him off. Hmm. Oh, God, Remus, I... I wasn't thinking. (laughs) It's fine, he chuckled. I've got over being an orphan by now. He stayed for about an hour before heading off to catch his bus in the cold dark of the early winter evening. He clutched two slices of cake wrapped in pink paper napkins. One for you and one for your sort of boyfriend, Mary winked as she handed them over. He kissed her cheek and she stretched up on her tiptoes to hug him. She smelled the same and it made him want to cry. Love you, sweetheart, she whispered. I'm so pleased to see you getting yourself back. He gave her a half smile, congratulated her again and left. She was right. He was getting back to himself, or if not that, becoming somebody else, somebody who was coping. He'd kicked the fags and booze, he rarely spent afternoons staring at his bedroom ceiling, unable to get dressed. Sometimes weird things made him anxious, like the smell of motor oil, or when they'd play old Bowie songs on the radio. Once, he'd seen a teenage girl with ginger hair get off a bus in Finsbury Park and almost followed her home, but he was doing better. Sometimes he could even think about Sirius. Sometimes he could talk about him. Only to Grant, and only if he asked. Funny things, like pranks they'd done at school, or stupid in-jokes. He didn't think about them being together. He turned Sirius into a different person in his mind, just another character from his school days. That made things much easier. After the christening on the way home, Remus thought about Harry. He hoped the kid was happy or at least that he wasn't angry. Remus tried to picture himself, aged eleven, crossing the barrier at King's Cross for the first time. It had been nerve-wracking and exhilarating. He hadn't known how to act, how to relate to anyone else. And then he'd met James, the first friendly face on the train that day. It was just too cruel that Harry wouldn't ever know him. Remus was in danger of getting nostalgic now, and weepy so he got off the bus to walk the rest of the way home. He was tired by the time he got in, and his hip hurt, but that was okay. He felt good about having left the house. All right, sunshine, Grant called from the kitchen as Remus shut the front door. Hiya. How was it? Church was a bit boring. Seeing Mary was nice. No good. Grant came through to lean in the doorframe. He was drying a dish they'd used last night. Leave that, I'll do it, Remus said, collapsing into the couch. Nah, it's done. Mary invited us for dinner. They live out in Hounslow, though, bit of a trek. But if you fancy it. Oh, she knows who I am now, Grant smirked. Sort of, Remus blushed. She knows I'm seeing someone, just... For almost nine years, Remus. Sorry, it's just weird, because... Mary knew me back then, you know. You mean she knew you when you were with Sirius? Grant said flatly, turning back into the kitchen to put the plate away. Oh, don't be like that, Remus said, getting up stiffly. I'm not being like anything. Grant's face was hidden by the cupboard door. I invited you to the christening. You didn't want to come. You know bloody well why, too. You ate churches, I know. Well, 
Then, why are we fighting? Rumors frowned, confused. This isn't fighting. Grant closed the door to the cupboard, sighing. What is it, then? Well, it was ten years ago, that's all. You're still acting like I don't matter as much as he did. What? No, that's mad, that's... That's all I want to say. Grant raises a hand to stop him. Like I said, this isn't a fight. But Grant, I don't... You're wrong, I swear. I want you to meet Mary, I do. I'm going for a walk, okay? I need some air. Grant pushed past him to the door. He took his coat off the hook. The coat Remus had bought him last Christmas. I'll be back in an hour or so. Take a paracetamol for your hip, will you? You're limping again. End of chapter 181